heroes. That's something the world sorely needs. Avengers. I am inevitable. There will always be more to finish my work. This is just the beginning. She's destroying every place I call home and taking powers from us. If I don't fix this, it will be the end of everything. You got this. I'm asking Monica. for one last fight. There's a different reality leading into ours. They're here. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This will be my brand new Marvel's trailer. There's a bunch of new footage and a brand new scene of Thanos. That's right. There's a brand new scene of Thanos that we have not heard before from the time around Avengers Endgame. I'll explain what's going on with that. There were like two or three hours worth of Avengers Endgame and Avengers Infinity War. They wound up deleting from those movies just because the movies got so big. Some of you also probably spotted the X-Men teaser in one of the trailers here, too, where they're talking about the incursions. Like, literally, they use the what comes next with the fade out on the X line specifically, meaning that there is some X-Men stuff happening during the movie, which I'll talk about later in the video. There's also a bunch of scenes that explain more about what's going on with Miss Marvel's two different bangles and them teasing what's happening in the next phase of Marvel, like the next couple of movies. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I've been doing that Loki Blu-ray giveaway on my Loki videos. I'll just continue that on this. So all you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and post all your theories about what's going on in the movie. Really big warning too, there's like a weird spammer going around the comments of my videos and a lot of other people's videos for big channels, basically trying to get people to message them on like Telegram and other weird things saying that they have some giveaway that they've won. That is not me. I'll never ask anybody in any of the comments to message me on some other social media network or anything like that. Hopefully YouTube will fix the problem. But the brand new scene of Thanos in this is him saying that there'll always be more to finish my work. In addition to a bunch of other scenes that we did see in the theater for Avengers Endgame with him saying I am inevitable with Iron Man yoinking the Infinity Stones and snapping the Infinity Gauntlet. They've been including a bunch of Avengers Endgame footage in the last couple Marvel's trailers. It's just this particular Thanos scene that they include in this is like brand new, never before heard. And I believe it's part of a deleted scene from Avengers Endgame. Like I said, they're like six hours worth of that movie that they cut out just because it got way too long. Deleted scenes, a bunch of alternate endings. I did a bunch of videos for all of those a few years ago when Avengers Endgame came out in theaters. They only posted a few of the deleted scenes online, but I'll post links for all those scenes in the description below. It's almost like there were two versions of Avengers Endgame, maybe like four versions that they filmed, and we only saw one of them in theaters. And I believe the scene of him talking about others being out there to finish his work was from this part of the final battle where Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor start to fight him. But this is before Doctor Strange and Wong show up to portal everyone to the battlefield. So it's just the four of them getting ready to square off and fight. There was meant to be a completely alternate version of this ending to the movie, like big alternate ending, as you would expect, like the actual fight went down in a very different way. Originally, what was going to happen is that Thanos from 2014 was going to kill all the Avengers in his original 2014 time when he learned what was really going on. Then after killing all those Avengers in that time period, he comes forward to the future to fight them in the final battle, showing up by throwing Captain America's severed head at their feet, seeing Captain America react to his dead head. Part of the reason for them doing things this way is that for a lot of the production of the movie, like while things were actually being filmed, there was a lot of discussion about them wanting to kill off all of the original six Avengers. But by the time they got close to finishing the movie, they got a little bit shy about that. Like, no, maybe we don't want to kill every single one of them. So this scene was sort of a compromise between those two ideas. Like they had their cake and ate it too because he killed the Avengers in the past, then came forward to the future to fight these versions of the characters. And the reason why killing the Avengers in the past didn't erase these versions from existence in the final battle is because of the way time travel works in the MCU. So you have to remember, changing the past doesn't change your original future. It only creates a new nexus event branching out from that timeline, like a totally new timeline, which they covered in the Loki series. 
So after Thanos would have killed all the Avengers in 2014, there would have been a new branch timeline out there where there were no Avengers anymore. But the original Sacred Timeline version of them didn't change in this final battle. Like, things still went down this way up to this moment. Then they have their brief conversation where they start to square off and they have the scene of him talking about there being others out there that will finish his work. And it was meant to build on the concept that they were teasing the other major villains that Marvel was going to introduce in Marvel Phase 4, Phase 5, Phase 6, the next sagas after that, like Kang the Conqueror, the Council of Kangs. Just in general, it was also meant to tease villains that Marvel hadn't figured out yet, like they didn't know exactly when they were going to do, like Galactus. They knew at the time, eventually they'd do a version of Galactus, Annihilus, the Celestials, but they weren't sure exactly when they were going to do those. So they just wanted a generic teaser for those, like the way that they tease all the future movies in successive Avengers movies. It was basically Thanos saying that even if the Avengers were able to stop him today, kill him, prevent him from snapping the Infinity Gauntlet again, there would always be another villain, more powerful than him, who would come along and balance the universe. Like there's no way that they'd always be able to stop the next villain around the corner. So this is also meant to build on that Iron Man teaser, you mess with time, it tends to mess back. You mess with time, it tends to mess back. You'll see. They're beginning to touch the multiverse. And if we let them, they will kill. Now in present day, that's something that they're paying off with Avengers 5 and the Council of Kangs coming for them because the Avengers are, quote unquote, messing with time, messing with the multiverse. So in the trailer, they're using that Thanos reference, like the next villain around the corner to try and balance the universe, being a reference to Dar Ben, the leader of the Kree in present day, who's using Miss Marvel's other bangle, which they're finally confirming are based on the Kree negabands and Quasar's quantum bands, two completely different things, but they're sort of combining those ideas in the MCU. The Kree negabands are powered by the negative zone, which is a big Fantastic Four thing, and the quantum bands of Quasar are powered by the quantum realm. There are a couple moments during the last few Marvel's trailers that do a better job at showing off some of the other powers of the Bengals. Like Dar Ben is using hers in a different way than Miss Marvel uses hers. But just to be clear, they're both the exact same type of Bengal. The two Bengals don't have different abilities. It's just that Miss Marvel also has her different mutant powers on top of that. She came up with her own way of using her bangle than Dar Ben did with hers. Part of the idea is that Dar Ben comes into the movie knowing way more about what the Bengals actually are and how to use their full power. You have to remember that the Marvels movie takes place literally right after the Miss Marvel series ends. So like she's just gotten the bangle. She has barely any idea of how it actually works. She knows that it's special. She can make constructs with it. But part of the idea is that her mutant powers also influence that. She'll probably get a much bigger info dump on what the bangles actually are and how to actually use them during the movie. But notice in the trailers, Dar Ben is using her bangle in combination with one of the Accuser core hammers. It's just like running the Accuser's hammer to open portals across space that allow her to steal resources from planets friendly to Captain Marvel and bring the resources to Kree worlds that need them. They're meant to start the movie at a low point for their race. Like the Kree race is on the verge of dying out. They're losing resources because Captain Marvel spent the last 30 years basically trying to cripple their society across the galaxy, cripple their military strength, cripple their industrial capacity. That's why they hate her so much when the movie picks up. Darben then finds the other bangle and uses it to steal resources from other planets to help them survive. So she's kind of balancing, quote unquote, the universe, but balancing it towards the Kree. The other power that they show off in the trailers too, the bangle gives her the ability to absorb Captain Marvel's blast. There's a recent trailer with a fight scene where she taunts her, saying that her attacks only make Darben stronger. That was what she was talking about. So Captain Marvel can blast her all she wants, and it'll just literally make her more powerful. They're basically trying to say that Captain Marvel can't beat her in combat this way. Like, she won't be able to solve this problem by punching it away. I haven't seen the movie yet, but the early theory is that this is going to be one of those movies, unlike Avengers Endgame, that will end with them having to talk it out like bros, so to speak, instead of fighting, even though it's a bunch of women. Like, they won't end the movie killing Dar Ben. They'll end the movie with some truce and make arrangements that will help the Kree race survive and end hostilities between them and the Skrulls. So that their relationship going forward is a little bit more like Goku and Vegeta. Like, they're not best of friends, but they're also not bitter, bitter enemies. That was what that ending scene in the Secret Invasion series was all about. Like, they were meant to tease the Marvel's movie, the peace summit he was heading to, is something they're going to cover during the Marvel's. There's also a bunch of brand new footage of Monica Rambeau in the recent trailers talking about another reality that's starting to bleed into their reality. So this gets back to the whole Avengers 5 Kang Dynasty, Avengers 6 Secret Wars of it all with the incursions. This movie is supposed to show us an actual incursion going down. Like they've been talking about it in previous movies, now we're finally actually going to see it go down. 
Apparently, she's supposed to get trapped in this other reality, and it's meant to be like a universe with X-Men characters teasing Deadpool 3, and there's some kind of Deadpool 3 post credit scene. They literally tease X-Men stuff here in the actual trailer, because when they're transitioning, what comes next, it fades out on the X line. Like, oh yeah, we're definitely doing some X-Men stuff in this movie. Coincidence? I think not! Thought we wouldn't notice, but we did. I believe it's also meant to be a universe where her mother, Maria Rambeau, became Captain Marvel, so she gets to see her mother again, because the main universe version of her mother died during the five-year time jump. We saw that go down during WandaVision, like she got snapped back after her mother had died. So essentially, she didn't get to say goodbye to her mother, and she'll get to see her again at the end of this movie, or a version of her mother. Not the one from the 838 universe, because they killed that version of Captain Marvel. Generally, there's also a lot more Avengers references in the last couple Marvel's trailers, too, because they want to tease that they're eventually going to put together that new Avengers team. I believe we're meant to get a teaser for that at some point during Captain America 4, but I don't think the team will actually come together to, like, Marvel Phase 6. There's a lot of movies that Marvel has not announced for Marvel Phase 6 yet, like the next couple years. Kevin Feige's got a little shy about announcing future things just because he doesn't want to have to announce that they also got delayed. So it's a little embarrassing for them to announce, like, a big schedule and then announce that it's been delayed, like, six different times. There's a bunch of other big stuff coming up really soon, too. Like, we have X-Men 97 episodes. That's supposed to come after the Echo series drops. And I think we're going to get an Echo trailer at some point this week, maybe next week. Like, really, really soon. Of course, we'll do a video for that. Because the biggest thing about that series is that Daredevil and Kingpin are coming back in a much bigger way than they did in Spider-Man No Way Home and during the Hawkeye series. So it's meant to be sort of like a setup for Daredevil Born Again, which they completely reworked. Now the showrunner from The Punisher is actually doing Daredevil Born Again in a bunch of people from the local series. So Kevin Feige just stacked the deck for Daredevil Born Again. I'm way more excited about that show now. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up. Click here for my brand new Loki Episode 5 and Episode 6 video, and click here to learn about that Quasar deleted scene during the Marvels movie and a bunch of other Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.